What's up, Yens guys? Welcome back to Fishing PA with Ryan Reed. Now, some of you have recently reached out to me and asked me to do an episode that's really based on generic fishing tips, secrets, and rules of thumb. Now, you guys are looking for information that's really been passed down through the years. You're looking for information that your grandfather would teach you about the sport of fishing. Now, when I first heard this idea, I kind of fell in love with it because it's an awesome way for me to revisit all the things that have been handed down to me throughout the years. But it's an even better opportunity for me to convey that information to you guys, especially for those of you that are looking to get into the sport of fishing. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna focus on those tips, secrets, and generalized rules of thumb that'll help you guys when you're thinking about heading out to do some fishing next spring. All right guys, for my first tip, we're gonna talk about wind. Now it's important for you guys to understand wind and wind direction before you head out there on the water to do some fishing. The fishing secret when it comes down to wind is this. Wind from the west, fish bite the best. Wind from the east, fish bite the least. Wind from the south blows the bait fish in their mouth. And wind from the north, smart anglers don't go forth. So before you guys head out on the water, make sure you check the wind and the wind direction because that'll help you guys catch more fish or avoid a really bad day out on the water. All right guys, tip number two, pay attention to weather and weather patterns. Now we know that fish love to hide in cover when it's sunny out or when you have a bluebird day. So the general rule of thumb is when it's sunny outside and you have a bluebird day, fish tighter to cover. When you guys have an overcast or a dark day, you guys want to cover more water. Another rule of thumb for weather patterns, fish shallow early and late and fish deeper on your sunnier bluebird days. The fish are going to move shallow when it's a little bit cloudy or dark and the fish are going to move deeper to get away from that sunlight penetration through the water. All right guys, weather tip number three. You have to understand water temperature. Water temperature dictates the behavior of the fish. For example, when you have cold water scenarios, anything under 60 degrees, fish have a tendency to be more lethargic. So your bait presentations, you're gonna to wanna to use slower moving baits, like jerk baits like that. However, when the water temperature rises, especially above 60 degrees, that's when you guys can start throwing bucktails and topwater baits. Now this is a general rule of thumb, but anything under that 60 degree mark, these bucktails and this topwater bait is not going to produce a bite. So again, it's important for you to understand water temperature and adapt your approach and that'll help you guys catch more fish. All right guys, weather tip number four. Cold fronts, so cold weather fronts we're talking about. When a cold front moves in, fish bite less. However, a cold front in cold water, shut the fish off. So anytime you have a cold water and cold weather front scenario, you probably want to avoid going out that day because it's not going to be really productive. Okay, weather tip number five. This has to do with high wind volume. Now anytime you guys have high wind, that could potentially push bait fish into shallow water. And that's key for you guys to understand as anglers. If you have a high wind coming out of the west and it's pushing the water from west to east, the bait fish could be potentially pushed up against that eastern shoreline. So if you guys can find the bait fish, you guys are gonna find medium and large fish in that general area. So always, again, pay attention to high wind and pay attention to what shoreline is getting battered by that wind. If you guys can locate that and then eventually locate the bait fish, you're gonna put yourself in a position to catch more fish in general. All right, weather tip number six. Rising water is better than dropping water. Anytime you guys have rising water, the fish are gonna to move towards shore. Anytime you have dropping water, the fish are gonna scatter throughout that body to try to find more oxygen. So high water is typically better in a lake than low water scenarios. Now some of you may disagree with that when it comes to fishing in a stream or a creek. 
However, this is a general rule of thumb for when you're fishing lakes. So keep that in mind. If you go out on the river or you go out on a stream, sometimes falling water can be a bit better in that scenario. All right guys, tackle tip number one. Big baits catch big fish. Little baits catch more fish. Okay, tackle tip number two has to do with lure selection. When you guys are buying baits, I always buy two of each type of bait. I usually buy a natural color like this all wife and I buy a bright or flamboyant color like this orange fire tiger. And the reason for that has to do with setting yourself up for different water clarity levels. So the top secret tip for lure selection is really focus on water clarity. So for clear water or bright sunny days, you guys want to focus on your natural patterns. Now for cloudy days and you have murky water conditions, you guys want to focus on throwing your brighter or more flamboyant baits. That'll help the fish key in in those different scenarios. However, one more scenario, when you guys are fishing at night, it's always better to throw darker color baits in darker water. The fish are gonna key in on a darker silhouette in dark water much more easily than a natural color like that or a flamboyant color like that. Tackle tip number three, match the hatch. If you guys are fishing Lake Arthur, you know there's a healthy all-wife population in there. So I'm probably gonna take a look at throwing my all-wife baits. Now, if you guys are fishing another lake that has shad-type bait fish in it, maybe Cisco's, then I would go with a shad-type bait that's in blue. The key is match your bait fish in your local lake and that'll help you guys produce more fish. Tackle tip number four, fish love timber. However, when you guys are fishing heavy, heavy timber, it's always better to go with a single hook bait approach, something like this jig, versus something with multiple treble hooks. And the common sense reason for that is the more hooks you have on the bait, the more likely you are to get hung up in that timber and potentially lose a very expensive bait when you're out there fishing. Tackle tip number five. When you guys are fishing shallow, calm water, throw lighter baits. When you guys are fishing heavy wind in rushing water, fish heavier baits. Those two scenarios, by fishing lighter baits in shallow, calm water, and fishing heavier baits in rushing water, that'll help you guys control that bait just a little bit better, and again, it'll help you to produce more fish. My goodness, that's a pretty looking bait. It's black perch, it's black, it's got the gold shimmer in it. And look at this one, look how pretty this one is. Like fire tiger perch pattern. Tackle tip number six. 90% of the fishing lures on the market are geared towards attracting the fishermen, not the fish. The secret is don't go out there and spend hundreds of dollars on fishing lures just because you think they're gonna catch more fish. Find a profile that you like and a color that you like and stick with it. Don't make the sport overly expensive. Tackle tip number seven. Cheap baits make you brave. How many of you guys go bank yanking with an expensive $40 Wiley's bait? I can tell you not many of us will do that. And the reason for that is we don't want to lose one of our really high-end expensive plugs when we're fishing from shore. However, if you guys have baits like Wiley's in your box, they're very pretty, they work very, very well. They're a high-end bait. If you guys don't pitch those things and get that lure down to where it could possibly get in trouble, you're not gonna be effective with it. So the tip is this. If you guys have a high-end expensive bait and you're afraid to throw it, just don't. Use an inexpensive lure to get that lure in the danger zone for you guys to hook up with more fish. Key here is cheap lures used in the right zone is way better than an expensive lure in a safe zone. Tackle tip number eight. You guys don't do what I did when I first started musky fishing. 
You guys don't need to go out on the market and buy every single lure that's available. My tip for you guys is to focus on one or two different types of baits, maybe one or two different types of crankbaits. Really practice and practice and practice until you guys learn and understand how to catch fish with a particular bait. If you guys can do that and you can master a lure, you're going to be effective with it. But you can't do that unless you spend the amount of time with it. So again, Focus on learning a specific bait, really get effective with it before you guys branch off. That'll save you some money and it'll also help you guys perfect a certain method in order to be a better angler. All right guys, for my ninth and final tackle tip, we're gonna talk about knots. Now for those of you out there that know how to tie every single fishing knot there is, I applaud you, that's fantastic. I wish I could do that, however, the tip or the secret is this, find a good knot, perfect it, and stick with it. You guys don't necessarily have to learn every single knot that's out there. There's a general rule of thumb that says polymer knot for braid and improved clinch knot for mono and for fluoro. However, I use the improved clinch knot for everything I do regardless of braid or mono or fluoro and I use a double improved clinch knot when I'm out there musky fishing with 80 pound braid. The knot has stood the test of time for me. I have not had any issues. So the tip is find a good knot that works for you, perfect it, and trust it because it will work for you guys when you're out there fishing. General fishing tip number one. When is the best time for you guys to go fishing? The answer is, whenever you can. And the reason for that has to do with practice. Practice makes perfect. Now there are things you guys can do to be effective. You can pay attention to the moon phases or the lunar phases. You guys can pay attention to weather and water temperature. You guys can pay attention to all the elements around you in a certain lake. However, you guys won't be effective as fishermen unless you get out there and you hit the water. So yes, while you have all these other things to take into account, practice makes perfect. You will become a better angler if you put the time in and you work hard at it. Fishing tip number two, we talked about this a little bit earlier. We're talking about structure or cover, and in particular, weeds. We know that predatory fish love weeds. They love setting up on weed edges to ambush bait fish or smaller fish. So the tip is for you guys to learn weed edges in a lake and cast your baits or troll your bait along those weed edges. When you guys are fishing for bass, pike, or musky, whatever fish out there is gonna set up on a weed edge, if you guys find the weeds, you'll find the fish. Fishing tip number three, find your inlets and find your outlets. Anytime you guys have water coming into another body of water or exiting that body of water, the oxygen content is going to be higher. That's a much more favorable spot for fish to hang out. If you guys fish inlets and you fish outlets, you will be more productive. Fishing tip number four, when you guys are out there doing some crappy fishing. Now this is a top secret tip that I've learned from somebody that was much, much older than me that has a lot more experience. When you guys are out there crappy fishing, you guys catch your first crappy. If you guys are keeping them, what you want to do is you want to scale that first fish. Just take a scaler and take some of those scales off that fish. If you guys take the scales every once in a while, you're going to want to take a chunk of those scales and just kind of sprinkle it in the water. What that does is the shimmer of those scales as they fall down in the water column is actually going to attract more crappie. If you guys can do that, there's a good bet that you're going to catch more fish on any given day. General fishing tip number five, top secret bass bait, grasshoppers. If you guys have fished with grasshoppers, awesome. When I was younger, I used to catch all kinds of those flying grasshoppers out in the field and I would take them down to our pond. And what I would do is I'd hook those up and I'd cast them out. Those hoppers are gonna sit on top of the water and the, the action is like no other. They're gonna be moving around and also those wings are gonna be buzzing off the water. Grasshoppers, especially the flying ones, are awesome, awesome bass baits not only in kind of late spring, but in through summer. Guys, use your grasshoppers and I promise you, you will catch more fish. 
Fishing tip number six, don't ever leave fish to find fish. If you guys are out there on the boat and you're marking good schools of bait fish and you're seeing other fish in the area, don't leave that area to go find other fish. If you guys are out there shore fishing for bluegill and crappie and perch and you're catching fish, don't leave that area to go look for fish. Never leave fish to find fish. If you guys keep that rule of thumb in mind, I promise you it'll eventually pay off for you. Fishing tip number seven especially when I'm out there trout fishing. This has been beneficial for me. When you guys go out and you're doing some bank yanking, before you touch any of your gear, take your hands and rub them in the grass and in the dirt. Get them all grassy and get them all dirty. The reason you guys will do that is to mask the scent on your hand. If you guys do that and you start touching your bait, I promise you, for whatever reason, whether the fish smell you, the oil on your hands, or maybe it's all in my head, the moments I've started doing that more by getting my hands dirty with that dirt and that grass, it seems like I catch more fish. That was passed down to me by a really experienced angler. They said to rub your hand in the grass, and I can tell you it's been very productive for me. So check that out when you guys are out there when you're doing some bank yanking in the spring. Okay, Grandpap's wisdom number one. Always, always, always check your fishing gear before you guys go out fishing. Check your eyelets. Make sure your rods are oiled. Make sure everything is in good working order. If you guys take care of your gear, your gear is going to take care of you. Grandpap's wisdom number two. Always be 200% confident in what you're doing. Guys, be focused and pay attention. Always have the mindset like that next cast could be that next bite. If you guys get into that mindset and you're 200% confident and you're focused, that will only make sure you're prepared to set the hook on that big five or six pounder on that next cast. Get in that mindset and I promise you it will help you be effective. Grandpap's wisdom number three. You guys are only able to cast the total distance of the amount of line on your reel. What that means is, if you're 100% spooled, you can cast 100% of what you have on your reel. If you guys are at 30% spooled, you can only cast up to 30%. Now for those of you that are steelhead fishermen, always mind how much line you have on your reels. You guys don't wanna get into a spot where a steelhead starts peeling off line and you're at 25 or 30% spooled. So, keep in mind, you're only as good as your equipment. Keep your reel spooled and you guys will be more effective. Grandpap's wisdom number four. Be humble and work hard. If you guys are humble as anglers and you guys work as hard as you can to get better, I promise you, you will get better and you will be more effective as a fisherman. Use the time in the winter to continue to learn and to do research on new techniques and tips and tricks Eat up as much information as you can, and it'll help you guys continue to get better as fishermen. Being humble can sometimes help you guys learn something new from somebody else that's trying to teach you. So always be humble, be kind as individuals, and be willing to learn, and that will help you guys develop as fishermen. All right, guys, I just want to go ahead and wrap this video up. I just want to say a few things. I wouldn't be the fisherman that I am today without good people around me, people that are patient and kind and willing to teach. I've had a lot of information passed down to me from my grandfather and from my dad and from close friends and family members. You know, I take that information and I try to do my best to apply it in my fishing. And it's really helped me continue to grow as an angler. And I was hoping to do the same with this particular video. So hopefully I gave you guys some good solid information that'll benefit you guys as fishermen. Now, if you guys like this video, go and hit that like button for me. If you guys like the content overall, please subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to ring the bell so you guys get all the notifications on all the new content that I'm gonna be posting this winter. All right, guys, I greatly appreciate your time. Thank you very much for watching. For those of you that are out there on the ice, tight lines, see you next time.